remorse is a feelings of sorrowful regret over harm we have done. Mistakes in actions and speech are unavoidable in life. Be not afraid of making mistakes. It is the lack of shame and remorse that one should fear instead. With a sense of shame and remorse, one has the power to change and the courage to start anew. Having remorse is like donning an elegant gown where one emits an aura of nobility. As said in Buddhist Sutra, being clothed with a sense of shame is the foremost adornment. Remorse is the almost virtues in this world. Remorse means to feel ashamed when one's knowledge, aspiration, loving kindness, and compassion are lacking. Remorse is a sense of apologies towards others such as parents and friends when one has feared them. Remorse is not a word that is used to scold others. Rather, it is to feel ashamed of one's unwholesome behavior and thoughts and having the awareness to repent and remedy them, thus this motivate one to improve. Venerable Master Xingyun has suffered from diabetes for more than 50 years. For the last decades, his eyesight deteriorated. He used to write calligraphy as a gift to others and also to raise funds for charity. When he no longer sees clearly, he came up with an innovative way of writing calligraphy, which he named it One Stroke Calligraphy. He has to write within one stroke as he won't be able to know where to put his brush for the next Chinese character. In this picture, you can see that he tried very hard to write because his hand trembles and his wrist was painful due to frequent writing. A lot of people like his calligraphy and his disciple helped him to help many exhibition for his work. There was once before the opening of an exhibition, the head of the Buddha Museum, Venerable Ru Chang, found out that a piece of master work was being stolen. Through the video camera, she knew that it was stolen by a young boy whose mother is a volunteer in the museum. She reported to Master and asked for his advice whether she should approach the volunteer. The Master then asked Venerable Wu Chang, who has never still while he or she was young. Venerable Wu Chang kept a moment of silence. Master said, well, since he liked my art piece, I just treat it as I gave it to him. Venerable Ru Chang said, okay, I know what I should do. So she replaced another piece of calligraphy artwork. A few days later, Venerable Ru Chang found the lost piece of calligraphy. The young boy has written it secretly. She then reported to the master again and asked whether she should put that piece of artwork as per initial plan. The master said, no, just pretend we don't know it was lost and written. Master didn't want to put back the original art piece because he wanted to save the pride of the boy. Master has accepted this boy remorseful act and forgave him. As Master said in this book, remorse is not used to scold others. A person with remorse knows to work vigorously. A person with remorse will strive for mastery. 
Therefore, a sense of remorse and shame are virtues. This is a very different way of interpreting the word remorse. It is remorse in another dimension. In the past, Venerable Ci Hang always gave away even his most prized possessions. He once told Master Xun Yun, in this lifetime, I feel remorseful because I lack meritorious causes and conditions. Therefore, I cannot miss any opportunity to broadly establish good affinities. This remorse is not in terms of doing harm to others or doing something wrong. This remorse is a reflection of ourselves not being able to do as good as what we hope to be. And as such, Venerable Shi Hang, he gave away all his possessions because he felt that he did not have very good affinities with others and he wanted to establish good affinities. This is a Buddhist definition of remorse. However, I find um, this is also a way of pushing ourselves to improve ourselves to be a better person. Another person. Let's look at another eminent mom. Venerable Da Xing once supervised a publication comprising of essays that criticize Buddhism. But Venerable Ying Guang admonished him for creating negative verbal karma. To express remorse, Venerable Da Xing named the book Kou Ye Ji, a collection of verbal karma. Sometimes we can repent in a very positive manner, not only just by stopping to do what was wrong, but we do what is correct. Taking examples from eminent master who strove for self-improvement and took responsibility for their mistake, a person who cultivates a remorseful conscience from a young age will not offend or violate others. They will be able to correct past wrongdoings resulting in the improvement of their character and moral courage. A sense of remorse enables a person to be cautious as well as to self-exhort and self-reflect. Naturally, the body and mind are continuously purified, improved and elevated. When we talk about remorse, it requires a lot of courage. We need courage to face the imperfect self. We need the courage to accept reprimand from other people. When you repent, people know that you did something wrong, but sometimes you can quietly, you know, try to hide your mistake and nobody knows about it. Of course, we know cause, conditions, and effect. People may not know, but the effects will come to you one day. It really requires a lot of courage. From this venerable Da Xin, we find that he not only has this courage to change whatever is wrong, he also do it in a positive way. I think that is the essence of remorse. The essence of remorse is not only to feel sorry, but also to improve ourselves, to change for the better. And not only the better for ourselves, but also the better for humanity. 
loving kindness and compassion. Loving kindness and compassion are wealth common to all beings. Loving kindness means bring happiness to others and compassion means elevating the suffering of others. We use the word in Chinese, chi means bring happiness to others, bei means elevating the suffering of others. These two words are two separate words. Uh, but usually when we talk in English, we either use the word loving kindness or we either use the word compassion. But in Buddhism, these two has different meaning. Instead of reserving one's love, kindness and compassion for family and friends, cultivate unconditional loving kindness means being kind and compassionate even towards those whom we don't know. Um, recently, we have the riots and then we also have the flood in China. You see a lot of people coming out to help, helping to clean the mall in South Africa. And then there are people who donating food for the flood in China. This is what we call unconditional loving kindness. We help people whom we don't know. Universal compassion is to regard oneself and others as the same. It is not difficult to practice loving kindness and compassion. The key is putting oneself in others' shoes. When others are in need, one offers help. When one is in need, one also seeks help from others. This is interesting. It's not only we giving, but when we need help, we also need to ask for help. And by putting oneself in other shoes, a mind of loving kindness and compassion will naturally arise. For example, now we are having winter. And I think it was sad luck yesterday morning. A fire broke out in Johannesburg. I think it's because of the corners. I'm not sure exactly what causes the outbreak of the fire, but it's really sad. Um, so how we put ourselves in other shoes? If we can afford, if we can help, we can like try donating blankets. And while we are under the warmth of our blankets, our heater, we should also think about others. Um, even if we can't afford to help everyone, we have our own financial restrictions, but we can offer our prayers. There, there are many ways of um, helping other people. Venerable Master Xun Yun always tell his disciples, one can be without anything, but never without kindness and compassion. Hence, even if we cannot be helping everyone, at least we show that kind of love within our heart and we pray for their well-being, welfare. Not only are loving kindness and compassion fundamental to the Buddha's teachings, but they are also qualities that everyone should possess. However, if practiced improperly, kindness and compassion can become unwholesome. For example, parents who condone their children's wrong behaviors may create social problems. 
tolerance for crime and misconduct causes social disorder. Senseless donation encourages greed. This originates from the lack of right understanding and moral courage. Therefore, true loving kindness and compassion should be guided by wisdom and right view. If not, excessive kindness and compassion lose their original benevolence and goodwill. Sometimes when we see people do things wrongly, we really need to think and justify when we should interfere and when we should not. This again, I would say, requires a lot of reflections on the Dharma and try and error. Yes, because like for example, the boy who stole the, the calligraphy art piece. For some people, they may think that that was a wrong act. So we should at least report to the mother. But master see it in another manner. And you can see that from the outcome, he did the right thing. But we really have to assess and see cases by cases. For some people, stealing is something very common to them. And maybe steal every day. So then these people, you just cannot let him or her continue stealing. As I heard a story about a lady who steal almost every day from one of our devotees. Every Sunday, she'll definitely go to church because she will make sure that she repent for stealing. Is This is not the right way, the right understanding of repent. That's not the purpose of it. It really requires a lot of wisdom and also courage because sometimes we don't dare to tell people all because we don't want to get ourselves into trouble. But you see during the riots, how some of the community, they guarded themselves, they, they formed groups to protect the well-being and the properties and possessions of their hard work. And yes, you're standing up for your own rights. True loving kindness and compassion include not only compliments or encouraging words, some are motivated to improve by the kind and compassionate encouragement of love, while others become vigilant through strict admonishment. You have to look at the person, the character. Some people, when they are wrong, you cannot scold them, but you have to talk to them nicely and explain to them. While some of them, you have to scold them and let them know they are wrong. However, most people practice momentary compassion or enthusiastic compassion. Rarely do they practice silence compassion or eternal compassion. What is meant by momentary compassion? For example, giving money to the poor only provides temporary relief to their dire situation. An example of enthusiastic compassion is a solemn and serene Dharma service affecting the participants only for the duration of the service. I think not only for, for Dharma service, even Dharma talk. Some people after listening to this um, Dharma talk feel wow, energized. But three days later coming back to square one. Affliction still arises. And that's why I keep on reminding everyone, you don't just listen, you have to reflect. Um, just like a few weeks ago, the lesson on listening, contemplations and practice. 
you need to keep on contemplating on what it was being taught. If not, it would be like <laughs> an enthusiastic compassion on my part. What is silence compassion? For example, people pursuing cultural and devious must endure loneliness as they work in solitude. Although unnoticed by many, the impact made by these unsung heroes is immense. Examples of practitioners of eternal compassion include those who establish schools inspiring the development of wisdom through education, as well as authors who spread beautiful and virtuous ideas through their writings. They are all examples of eternal compassion. This is one step further or deeper on how we look at compassion, how we interpret compassion. It is not only a short-term one, but a long-term one. It is not just a emotional one, but a very calm one, a peaceful one. We can get very excited, very happy over a certain compassionate act, but how lasting it is. Is the lasting impact that makes a lot of difference. An example of Master Xingyun when he was young, he renounced at the age of 12. And then um, there was a year whereby he was really sick and was lying on the bed. And he was really touched by the compassion of his master who gave him this half bowl of salted prickles. And because of this half bowl of salted prickles, he made a vow. He made a vow that he would want to spread the Dharma. He wanted to let more people get a chance to know about the Dharma. That is what he wanted to do to repay for his master, or now we call grandmaster, his kindness, his compassion. Compassion, how you change it become a kind of energy, how it make it become a lubricant in your life is what we call paying forward. And he did that. He really did that. That's why he had temples in so many countries. Loving kindness and compassion are like a priceless passport to a person may owe nothing. But no matter whether they go, happiness and safety will follow. Buddhist examination, all teachings expounded by the Dharma has the primary purpose of remedying all minds. The eight winds refer to praise, ridicule, defamation, honor, gain, loss, sorrow, and joy, all of which stir up emotions every day, just like gusts of winds. Which of the following is not the correct understanding of remorse? Let's look at the one that is correct. It means to feel ashamed when one's knowledge, aspiration, loving kindness, and compassion are lacking. It inspires a person to work vigorously and strive for mastery. It enables a person to be cautious as well as to self as hot and to self reflect. The last one why we say that is not a correct understanding is not meant to haunt you always behind your mind, reminding of your failures and insufficiencies. It is it's supposed to be a positive one. If it turns out to be a negative one, 
it becomes another form of mental affliction. Sometimes we may think that we have not done enough for our loved one in life and we feel remorseful over such things. But I think it can be either you are too harsh, you have too high standard of yourself, or well, maybe you really didn't do enough, but whatever past is past. If you can't do anything now, you either do it in future. If you really can't do anything because the person already passed away, you can pay it forward. So being positive, being proactive, is more important than just dwelling yourself in that kind of remorse emotion. That is not the purpose of remorse. We have to get ourselves out of that kind of feelings. Unconditional loving kindness involves the act of being kind and compassionate even towards those whom one does not have affinities with. Okay, I've covered everything now. Any questions? Bye bye. bye. bye.